Hey Jacques here. In this video, we're looking at assets and libraries in Figma. And this video is part of a full video series where we are creating a full mobile app design, home automation app design for that matter, and we are using auto layout. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to create buttons. If you haven't checked out that video, make sure to have a look at it. And in the video before that, we looked at how we can source icons. So the entire series is about creating this intuitive app design. So let's dive right into it. All right, so in the previous videos, we looked at how we can use auto layout. And in the first video, we created these two frames, dashboard and living room, where we started playing around with auto layout. And throughout the videos, I've also showed you how we can use auto layout to make things easier. At the end of the day, when you design something, you wanna make sure that you do it most effectively and most efficiently. And that's not just design, that's for development as well. All right, so in the previous video, we looked at creating these icons. I also showed you how to create the switch, an on switch and an off switch, and also these buttons. And just to kind of remind everybody, we are creating this full-fledged mobile app design so let's have a look at how we can use assets and libraries in Figma to make your life as a designer much easier. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna zoom in on this frame that we have. Currently it's called icon buttons. What I'm going to do though, is I'm gonna activate auto layout so that it just kind of shrunks everything and it looks a little neater. And we can also see that we have a few settings here. We can see that our spacing is uh, 30 on a horizontal gap and 21 on vertical gap. Because I'm so particular with my spacings, I'm just gonna change that so it's 30, 30. And because I also use Bootstrap for all of my development, I'm just going to set it to 25. We can dive into the paddings and margins in another video, but for now, let's just focus on creating the assets. Okay, so we have the few buttons that we created in the previous video. We have a plus and a few other icons. So let's go ahead and add that as assets. Okay, so to add it as assets, we're just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna go back to my layers. I'm just gonna look at the naming convention. So I'm using camel case, and in this case, it's plus button. I've got TV button. Oh, and there I need to rename this. I'm just gonna call it LED button. And let's change this guy as well. I'm gonna call it speaker button. And again, naming convention, you can use whatever you want. I'm just gonna use thermo button. And then we have our switch on and our switch off. All right, let's select the plus button. I'm going to right click and I am going to click on create component. When we create a component, you will see that the outline of the button or the group or the frame or the auto layout for that matter will change from blue to purple. That will indicate to you that this is now an actual component. And when we navigate over to assets, you will see that an icon button, we have a plus button. Now you would see on my design that I already have one just called icon. This was just me kind of playing around. Now that we've added the plus button, let's go and add the rest of them. So I'm going to right click and we are going to click create components. You're also going to see there's a shortcut. So control alt K, so we can do that for the next one. I'm just going to go ahead and click there and we're going to use control alt and K control alt and K for the rest of them control alt and K. Now we have our buttons added to the left, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. But now we need to add the switch and we need to add a variable. The right way to do this is to use a variable. Clicking on the button, I'm gonna go and go control alt K or right click and create component. And you're gonna see that we do have switch on in our assets. We need to go and add the off switch as well. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can also go and add this as another component and you can have the on switch and the off switch as separate components. But here's a nice thing about Figma that I really like. We can actually go a step further and we can add it as a variable, which I think is super, super cool. So to do that, we are going to click on the switch on button that we already created. And on the right hand side, you'll see that we have a property section. When we click on the property section, you will see that there's a little plus icon. What we can do is we can go and add a variant. There are multiple options to choose from, variant, boolean, instant swap, and text. But for the simplicity of what we're doing here, I'm just gonna go and add another variant. You're gonna see that it takes the switch on button and puts it in its own variant. That's exactly what we want. So with that, I'm going to navigate to the layers. You're gonna notice that it took our switch on button and created a component. And when it's created as a component, you'll notice that in the layer section of Figma, that specific layer 
is purple. Opening the switch on button, you'll notice that it has a little triangle in there. It's called default. And the reason for that, and the reason why it's a little triangle, that shows us that this is a variant of this actual component. Now, what I wanna add though, is this switch to be another variant of this switch. So to do that, we're going to copy this switch off button. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it. I'm gonna take the switch off button, I'm gonna copy it, and we are first going to create a component of it. Once it's created as a component, we are going to drop it right in to the switch on variant. What I normally do is I select my frame, and because we created an auto layout out of this frame, I'm just gonna change the height and I'm just gonna change it to 500 for now. We can always change it back. And I'm gonna click my off switch button. I'm gonna drag it and this is very tedious. So we wanna make sure that we drag it right there. So in this component, we have two variants. And to double check that, we can click on the component itself. And on the right hand side, you will see that we have default and it says property one. But when you look at the values, you're gonna see it's default and switch off. So we're already a step further. We just gotta fine tune this a little bit. What I like to do though, is take my component and I'm actually gonna turn on auto layout. And when you turn on auto layout, it neatly stacks it for us, but I'm just going to add a bit of spacing in between and I'm going to also add padding left and right. So now when you look at it, it has a purple dashed border around it and it's showing our on and off switch, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So when I go to assets, we can see that switch on, which in this case, when you hover over it, you're gonna see a little two at the top, which means it has two variants. So what I wanna do next is change the name because it says switch on, so it's a little confusing what this exactly is. I'm gonna go back to layers, I'm gonna change the name, and to change the name, I'm just gonna change this to, let's change it to switch on off so when we did that oh i don't like that to be honest i'm just going to make it a little easier on myself so that i can actually read it properly so now that we've done that when we go to assets we have switch on and switch off this is perfect because now we're playing around with assets and components this is key for any designer any professional designer that works in Figma. It's almost like a library that you create for yourself. What you can do with it though, just to test it out, is you can create a new frame. I'm just gonna put it here, I'm just testing right now, and you can literally go and drop these in, and it makes life so much easier. Just a side note, when we drop in a component that has different variations, we can click on it, and on the right-hand side, we can change it to either default or switch off. See how powerful that is? So if I wanna duplicate this, I can put it right here and I can quickly change it to the one that I actually want. So when this is important or when it will actually save you a lot of time is when we start looking at prototyping and we put prototypes together, this is definitely going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so just to recap, what we did in this video is we essentially took the buttons that we created in the previous video and we created components and assets that we will be using throughout the entire design. All right, so now that we've added a switch on and a switch off as an asset, as a variable, as a variant, I'm just gonna go back and change this fix to hug so that we can just have a little bit more control. So what I wanna do now is take these buttons and I wanna add a few variants and one of the key variants that I want to add is a hover or focus event, right? So in any design, in any development process, you normally have buttons with a hover or focus event. So let's go ahead and modify our assets or components to actually do that. Okay, to do this though, we need to adjust a few things. The first thing I'm going to do is select my icon button frame and I am going to change the width. I'm going to increase the width so that everything is next to each other and not kind of stacked below each other. I'm just gonna go back and change my fixed so that we can have a little bit more space to play around with. Okay, so now with that done, I'm gonna click on the first asset or component, the plus button, and I'm going to go and add a variant. When it does that though, you're gonna see that it might move things around. This is fine, this is normal. The reason it's doing that is because we are using auto layout. So if you're not using auto layout, it might not do this. Okay, so now with our plus button selected, 
I'm going to add a variant by clicking on the little plus button and we can go and rename this. So I'm going to call it hover forward slash focus. With it renamed, I am going to change a few things and I'm going to change the background color to my main primary color. By the way, in the next video, we'll look at colors and how we can manage colors properly. But for now, let's just keep it simple. I'm going to change it to my primary color. And I'm also going to change the actual icon color to white, just so that it looks like something that is proper and decent. Okay, we're going to do the rest. I'm going to click on my TV icon. We're going to click on the little plus button next to properties on the right hand side. And we are going to select variant. And again, it's going to move things around. It's auto layout. That's what it does. I'm just going to slide this open a little bit more so that it doesn't stack it underneath. And we are going to add a variant. And I'm going to do the same thing as what I did with the plus button. So I'm going to change the fill and I'm going to change the icon color. So now we're starting to have multiple variants or variables within the actual asset library, which is awesome. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to do the next one, the LED strip. I'm going to add variant. I'm going to add another variant and we're going to change the color. We're going to change the actual icon color to white, take the speaker, do the same thing, variant, we're going to add another variant and we're going to change the icon color to white. Perfect. And the last one to do is thermostat. So again, properties variant and we're going to add a variant. Beautiful. It's getting there. All right. And we're going to change this to white. Awesome. Now what we did, what we've done is we essentially created multiple variants. We used components and assets to do that. And now you can rename your assets on the left-hand side to exactly what you want. Why are we doing this? It speeds up the process and makes everything so much easier. And you're going to see as we progress through the series, we're going to take all these assets we have and we're going to put it in and put it as one design. And at the end of the day, when we create what we have here, when we create the outside home frame or the living room frame, we're literally just going to take our assets. We're going to drop it in, use auto layout, and we will be done. So super simple, super easy. The last thing I want to do though, is I want to tidy up a few things. I'm just going to change this back to hug. Perfect. And now we have something that we can use that we can play around with. All right. So in the next video, we're going to look at colors. We're going to look at variables with colors. I'm going to show you a few cool stuff with how you can arrange your colors within your Figma design. I'm also going to show you typography and how to play around with typography. Last thing, make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I know that you hear that a lot, but throughout the series, you're going to learn a lot. All right. With that said, thanks for watching.